Good morning. I hope you had a lovely week. We had some nice sun, sunny days. Such a nice time of year. Also saw in the newspaper this week how full our dams are. It's lovely to hear. This morning we are speaking on John chapter 9. It's quite an interesting chapter and I have a guest that's going to help us just help tell the story so that we could hear what the, what's happening in John and also give some commentary on what we hear. <clears throat> Let's welcome thank you. Um, yes, thank you that I could be here. The story that I want to tell this morning is a story from John 9, as you said, but it's actually a, a story that the whole John 9 needs to be in, needs to be spoken about to get to the real true meaning, I think, of what we, what we hear here today. So I want to read us the first um, 12 verses of John 9, just to get a good introduction to the text. John 9. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva. Then he anointed the eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means saint. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. So what I hear is that the the disciples have a very old testament understanding of how punishment and reward works i think we have spoken on this in the past where when you do good um good things happen but when you sin you're in a way punished but this is not the whole old testament does not speak in the similar way we have in the books of ecclesiastes the wisdom text of job uh, a counter argument to this thinking and i think jesus here is pointing out something in that line. Now, what we do not know is we do not know the extent of Jesus' knowledge on medical things that we know today. So the reason the man is blind, probably a medical reason which they couldn't identify, and the disciples would definitely not understand if Jesus did know. So what he does is he uses this this event, this person born blind, as a way to show God's love, as a way to show how God's work, we are called to do God's work. And what we have then is Jesus giving a bit of a teaching on how he was sent to do God's work and how we, in verse 4, are sent to do God's work while there is light, while we are in the day. Now, in those days, obviously, you did not have lights. You did not have uh, the ability to work at night because it was dark. So they would have been very well known. Uh, they would very well know why you cannot work at night. And the light and day, darkness, light metaphor is something that John uses quite often. And it's something that speaks of how Jesus influences the world Definitely in those days where there was so much uncertainty, the Jews were going through such a difficult time. And Jesus is saying, but what he brings, what God brings through him is light to the world. And he calls his disciples to do that work with him. Now, the early church, John was written probably between 70 and 100, closer to 100 after Christ, so it's one of the oldest, or you know, rather one of the youngest New Testament writings. And the early church would probably have heard this thinking, yes, we are called to work. We do not have Jesus physically with us, but we have the Spirit, and we are called to work to be light to the world. And this calling then moves over 
to a bit of a strange thing in the text where the person is, the, Jesus uses mud to put on the person's face. Now, there were some superstitious beliefs of the time where the saliva of a father had healing qualities, but not that of the mother. I do not think this is um, really relevant. I think what we hear here is that because the person had mud on his eyes and he did not just simply see, but he first had to go wash himself, what we find is that the person doesn't see Jesus. He does not know how Jesus looks. So when he has gone and he washed himself, he goes back, but he doesn't know how Jesus looks, so he doesn't see Jesus. So therefore he goes back home and others see in him something different. He was probably in a good mood, probably very happy, bouncing about. So others see a difference in him. And I ask him about this difference. Some believe that it's the same person who has been healed, whose eyes have been opened. But others, they say, no, it can't be him. They don't want to believe this. And the Mayan says, but it is I. But who healed you then? They would want to know. How does he look? And he says, he does not know where he is. It's very interesting. And the second part of uh, chapter 9 is where the Pharisees get involved with this story. So the, far the blind man or the man who was previously blind is taken to the Pharisees and the Pharisees start questioning him, start asking him, but how is it that he gained, he's gained his sight? And he, he tells of Jesus, he tells the same story of how Jesus anointed his eyes with the mud, how he was sent to wash and how he came back and he received his sight. But the, the Pharisees don't want to believe this. The Pharisees first try and make the man out to be a liar with Jesus, with being Jesus' accomplice, saying that, no, but Jesus is a sinner. How could he do this? Um, and then they ask the man again, but how is this possible? Who is this man? And the man says, this Jesus, this man, he is a prophet. And again, they ask him, and the man, I think, who was previously blind gets a bit frustrated and he said, but why don't you listen? Do you want to be his disciples? And they said, no, you are his disciples. We are disciples of Moses. So what the Pharisees are doing is they are placing themselves or trying to place themselves above this man, above Jesus saying, but they follow the law of Moses. And again, the man says, but he sticks to his story. He says, it is Jesus who gave him, who opened his eyes, who sight, gave him the sight so that he could see again. So the Pharisees, getting a bit frustrated, cast this man who was previously blind out, chasing him away, saying that he is not telling the truth, rejecting his thoughts, his words, trying to make that pretend that they are in the right and that this man is in the wrong. Interestingly enough, now with the second part with the Pharisees, we see clearly the Pharisees having a, a disliking to Jesus. We've seen that earlier in John also the Pharisees um, don't like what Jesus has been doing, what Jesus has been saying. Also with Jesus working on the Sabbath or Jesus healing on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees definitely used this as a criteria to shun Jesus, to push Jesus away, because Jesus has, has put in under question, put into uh, maybe put a few question marks on that which the Pharisees have told, that which the Pharisees have done, um, because what the Pharisees did was to keep um, themselves in power. What they did was they taught the Torah in a way that they could stay in power, that they could have a, a better life. But the others who were struggling weren't lifted up, weren't shown light in the way that Jesus did. Therefore also the Pharisees placing themselves above Jesus saying, but we are disciples of Moses, trying to appeal to the Jews saying that we are going all the way back through Old Testament history. We have been disciples to that. 
So what we have here is the Pharisees trying to distance themselves from Jesus, saying that they are better or right and Jesus is wrong. But this man, time and time again, sticking to his story, Jesus, no, this man is a prophet. This is a godly man who healed me. I think what we hear is that often people don't want to acknowledge the difference in those lives who have been changed by God. People don't want to acknowledge the difference, the happiness, the joy that someone has because that person may have been bad in their eyes. That person may not be the type of Christian that they want, the type of believer that they want. Just maybe that person isn't enough like them and this makes them uncomfortable. Let's listen to the last part of our text this morning. And then in the final part of chapter 9, I want to read for us again, because this is, I think, where the, where the crux, the crucial part of our text lay. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. So of the Pharisees near him heard these things, and said to him, Are we also blind? said Jesus. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see your guilt remains and so the story ends with a teaching of jesus i think maybe opening the eyes or shocking those hearing him the pharisees the disciples and those who follow jesus and in this final section we have jesus coming back approaching this man obviously this man does not recognize jesus um, because he didn't see him while he was blind and jesus said to him but i am the one i am the son of man the one this is me you are listening to and this man realizes it's jesus and he worships him he goes over to say that he is lord and worships him and jesus goes over to another teaching and this almost connects to the teaching that he gave in the beginning where he speaks on he has come to judge, but that those who were blind can see, and those who can see become blind. And I think what this teaching is telling us that often those who've never believed, those who, who come from darkness, when their light is shine on them, they receive it with so much more. They receive it, and they receive God in a way that they shine out to the world, that they shine out God's love, Jesus' love. To others around them but those who have been in faith long maybe growing up with faith they don't want to necessarily accept this they want to maybe cling to their understanding of the Bible cling to to their understanding of you have to do a B C D before you're welcome before you're a Christian and Jesus actually shunning them saying but no if this is how you want to be, then you are actually blind. Blind to the love of God. Blind to the sacrifice Christ made. Blind to the calling of the church to be light to the world. Now I think we would want to put ourselves in the shoes of the person previously blind or the disciples. But I think many of us are actually the Pharisees in this story. Many of us are actually the Pharisees in this story because we know the Bible may be better, because we've grown up in faith. And sometimes we do not want to accept people with a difference of opinion. We do not want to accept people who, who come to faith out of a life that was dark and, and not as we, just not nice. And we'd want to reject them. And Jesus is saying here, but if if we are those type of people, if we are these Pharisees type of people, 
then we are actually blind to the love of God. We are actually blind to the love that we've received. I think we should all try and place ourselves in the shoes of the person whose eyes have been opened. But when we are the Pharisees, when we are those who say that we see, I think we need to, to go again, to start again and humble ourselves. Humble ourselves before God. Humble ourselves before others. Maybe ask those person, those people rather, who are new to faith to help us maybe understand their journey. Maybe understand their relationship with God. I think this text challenges us in this way. Maybe we need to wash the mud off our own eyes to see the light of Christ anew. We are in such a challenging context with the virus, with everyone looking for answers, people maybe turning towards themselves rather than to to the light or to the outside to shine as light. And I think we, we should ask ourselves, but how can we be people who see light, who live light in this time rather than those who focus on themselves, who want to keep themselves in power, who want to seem to be the persons who have been doing the right thing. This, I think, is a challenge for this week, to reflect on how we can humble ourselves, how we can look in our, at our, in our world, in our daily lives, and see, but am I light, or am I actually hindering others from seeing the light? Because I think I am too good, or I know too much, I know more. A challenging thought which I leave you with today. Let us pray together. Thank you God for everything you give us. Thank you God that you sent your son Christ to be light to the world. Thank you that you shine Lord through the ages till today. And help us to live in that light and to shine that light. Please wash the mud off our eyes, Lord, that we can humble ourselves before you. And that we can go anew to live your light. Instead of trying to make others follow us and our beliefs. Humble us, Lord, so that we could welcome, embrace those who have come to the light. Lord, open our eyes to see where we can live light, where we can live love, where we can follow your example. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us, for this world, Lord, and help us to live that love. Amen. So let us go out and live this love, live this love in the world, and always know that the Lord blesses you and the Lord keeps you. The Lord makes His face shine upon you and be gracious towards you. The Lord turns His countenance towards you and gives you peace. Amen. Please share this message. um, Join our Facebook page. Follow us on YouTube and share this love and share this message with those around you. And let let us be light to the world today, tomorrow, going forward. Amen.